This is a movie that I suspect is very dear to your heart. Not that the other ones haven't been. <laughs> it is. It is. It's a, uh, it's a story that um, I'm really glad is being told uh, uh, for the men that went over and, and, and did this, you know, put it all on the line, life and limb. Uh, their story hadn't been told. A lot of people didn't even know about it. Uh, so it's, it's nice that they're getting a, an opportunity to have their story told. A lot of people don't really know that Rob Riggle was a Marine. Let's, let, let me re name, rank, and serial number. Yes, uh, well, uh, t uh, Lieutenant Colonel Rob Riggle, uh, 23 years, Marine Corps, uh, retired in 2013. What made you decide to do that? Um, I always wanted to serve my country. Uh, it was something I just always wanted to do. Uh, when I was in uh, college, uh, I had my pilot's license, so I took a test and I got a guaranteed flight contract with the Marine Corps, so I, I thought I would do that. I thought I would, uh, and, I, and I did. Uh, so, but I also wanted to be a, a comedian and an actor, and, and uh, so I wanted to pursue that as well. And we live in a great country where you can have more than one dream and, and you can pursue both of them. Did you find yourself being the funniest one on the base? Um, uh, in the right situation, yes, yes. I, I didn't, I, you know, I was an officer. I never wanted to be a goofball in front of uh, uh, my Marines because that's probably not the best thing to do. In 12 Strong, you play your boss. That's right. In real life. That's right, that's right. Now, uh, when I got over to Afghanistan, I uh, served under uh, Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Max Bowers. Um, who was my direct commanding officer. I did civil affairs and public affairs work for him uh, as far, part of his command element. Um, and now I play Lieutenant Colonel Max Bowers in the movie. Did you talk to him about your role? Not at all. I haven't talked to the man since Afghanistan. Uh, so I hope he likes it. <laughs> and uh, I hope I get a chance to see him. Hopefully he'll be at the premiere. Were you familiar with the 12 soldiers, with the 12, you know, the horse soldiers, the 12 strong? Yes. Uh, when I was in Afghanistan, our, our paths had crossed uh, because, you know, I got there in November, which is shortly after they did their mission. Um, and we were in Masri Sharif. We were on the outskirts of Masri Sharif in this abandoned Turkish high school. Um, and so there was, there was paths crossing in the hallway. So when you got this script, yeah. what went through your head? Um, I, I actually saw the script a couple years ago, um, and I remember reading it, thinking, "Oh, this is so great! I, you know, I know some of the names in here, and and you know, I serve with these guys, and that's I'm so glad this story's being told, and I love the book. So I was really happy. I was just happy that the story was getting told. But then it kind of went away, which often happens in Hollywood. You know, projects come and go; they get hot, they get cold, and and uh, so it went away. And I thought, well, I guess it's not going to happen. And then I got a call saying, "Hey." Uh, they're going to do it, and they want you to play Colonel Bowers. And I, I jumped at the chance because the cast and the producers and the director, um, there's so many talented people involved that uh, it was an honor. What was it like putting that uniform back on again in this context? Uh, it, was, uh, it was great. Uh, it's funny you say that because um, the uniform has a certain smell to it. it, it's, it it's weird. Uh, you put that stuff back on, and... The feeling of the fabric and the and the the smell and all of it, you it's it it does kind of snap you back into a, a mindset. Were you the expert on the set? Did everyone come to you and say, "Am I holding this gun right?" I, I mean, I was one of a couple people on set there to help. Um, I wasn't ever specifically tasked with you know. Uh, technically advising anything, but I, I know enough, obviously, about the military to say, hey, we don't do that, or no, 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 that's not, that's something from a movie that doesn't happen in real life, don't do that. And Like what? Oh, I don't know. Uh, wearing your cover indoors. You don't do that. No one does that, unless you're under arms. That's the only time you'd wear your cover inside. But people don't know that, unless you're in the military. No, of course not. Yeah. And if you're going to salute someone, you do it within six feet. You don't do it from a mile away. Um, the junior always starts the salute, and uh, there's all kinds of little things, courtesies and etiquettes and things like that. What did you learn about being in the military that has helped you be an actor? Uh, nothing, really, other than the intangibles. Uh, 
things like uh, having a thick skin, uh, determination, um, picking an objective uh, and accomplishing it, uh, setting goals, you know, all the things that kind of prepare you. Uh, in the military, you get a thick skin, you learn to get mentally tough, you learn how to handle rejection, you learn how to handle failure and come back, get yourself up off the ground and start again. And if you're going to go to Hollywood, you need to know those things because you're going to get knocked down a lot. When you were on the set, were you part of the, with the horses and the bombs and the explosions? No, or you all were... my stuff was in garrison for the most part. So I was, you know, I didn't get to, I didn't get to do all the cool, fun stuff um, like they did. Uh, I wish I would have. Um, but uh, uh, they, it looks like they had a lot of fun from what I saw. No, I was back in, my stuff was born back in garrison. This was a kind of a relatively new director. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like working with someone like that on such a big scale? He had the best passion. Um, he, his energy was palpable, which is so great on a set. Uh, he came in and he was constantly buzzing and checking things out and wanting to look at things and, you know, here, say it like this, and, and then he'd move in and go, no, 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 I want, I want different lights. And, and, and then he goes, yes, this is what I want. And he, he, he um, I like when, a, when the captain of a ship uh, has a vision and knows what they want, uh, because then you can jump in and really help and support, help fulfill whatever that vision is. Um, and he was a great communicator and great energy, and uh, so I, I really enjoyed working with him. This was a little bit of a different role for Chris Hemsworth. Mm -hmm. So uh, what was it like working with a real hero? <laughs> he is, um, he's awesome. He's kind of everything you'd hope he would be. Um, I, I really enjoyed my time with him. I was actually, I wish I had more time with him because he's funny, he's charming, he's nice, he's a very gracious actor. He's, uh, uh, he's a total professional, uh, great work ethic, uh, you know. The kind of guy, when he left, he's like, ah, oh, I'd, I'd like to be friends with him, you know? Yeah, so he's a, he's a good one. He's a really good one. What will we get from 12 Strong? What, what do you think an audience will take away from this? Uh, you know, I hope that they, they get to see that, that there are men and women out there every day preparing for when bad things happen, preparing for trouble. Um, right now, as you and I are talking, there are soldiers and sailors and airmen and Marines out there training. God forbid they should have to go into harm's way, but they're training and preparing, and some of them are in harm's way right now. Um, and they're doing it, they're, they're risking life and limb for us and for our liberties and for other people's liberties. Um, so I, I hope they take away that um, there are men and women out there um, preparing uh, for when we are least prepared. This movie made me feel strong and yet small because they're, they're such, they are the real heroes. They're doing this. Mm -hmm. This is their job. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they are, they are dedicated professionals, and they, they, they take what they do very seriously, and, they, uh, and thank God they do, because when tragedies happen, like 9-11, it's nice to know that we have men and women that are ready to go. Um, and and uh, that does, you know, it, does, it, it doesn't just happen. They have to train for years and years and years, uh, and maybe they never, maybe they never go forward. Uh, and God willing, they don't have to. But if they if they do, they're ready. Rob Riggle fans may be surprised at you in Twelve Strong. Well, you know, look, I, my my bread and butter's always been comedy. You know, it's it's I'm a comedic actor, I'm a comedian, and uh, that's what I enjoy and that's what I love. But I. I I've studied active, acting extensively, so I, I you know, I, <laughs> I can do things. I just haven't been given many opportunities, but now I'm, I'm starting to get some, and this was a, a straight role, more of a straight role, and um, I really enjoyed playing, playing it. Um, I have a, a drama coming out in March that's more of a really heavy drama, so, um, so yeah, you might get to see some new, new things uh, from me this year. Michael Pena got the funny lines, I think. He always gets the funny lines. Even he can turn anything funny. He's he's a great guy. He's a great one.